Welcome to Cross Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Elwix. And today we're talking about non iOS and Google tablets. You know, we get a lot of calls about, well, you know, I just want a tablet to do X or Y. And I don't want to buy or do the expense of an iPad or do the expense of a Samsung or even a Google tablet. So people start looking into other options. You know, Amazon has like a lot of options. And is this a good call or not? And I will share two that I have personally test. One is the books. It's B-O-O-X. They are Android based. Okay, they are very interesting. One of them has an e-ink and allows you to install applications from the Google Store. So you can really build a tablet with e-ink. They also have an e-ink color option um, for that. They are not bad tablets. They are slow. Okay, and that is the same issue I have experienced with the Fire when my wife iPad mini die and it die out of old age. Okay. And she, I asked her to replace that for another and she was not sure about the expense. So she said, no, 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 get me a fire. And I got her at that time, the same size of fire eight, the, the, the beefiest you could. And she, even to this day, complained that, yeah, it's not an iPad. And even that she doesn't, is not as bought in the ecosystem. And the reason is it's a slow, it's not as fast. It is not as precise, you know, it can work, yes. It's the best experience. That's where, in my opinion, get short. Um, even when, with the books specifically, I got the book C, the color, in color, because I thought, oh, this is cool. I can get this, I can load books, I can load comics and read comics on e-ink in bed. Okay, it sounds great. The device at the time I bought it was around 350 bucks. Okay, and but again, it's a slow, very, mm -hmm. very slow. And it may be that I'm very used to my good experience of a speed on the iPad mini, or I don't know, but I could not handle that that did never turn into the device that I will grab first. The device that I grab first yeah. is always the iPad mini. Yeah, it's it's a difficult bridge to cross because when you cross over, even at the lowest end, iPad, the lowest end Samsung tablet, the bare minimum, it is still a bridge gap between that and the highest end of these what i want to call economy tablets things like you know, the fire max 11 which is kind of their top end amazon tablet right uh, is about 180 dollars, which is a third of the next closest android tablet you know in that space and and let's keep in mind Amazon is running a variant of Android. They have their own modifications onto it. And unfortunately, you do not have access to the Google Play Store unless you sideload it. Caveat said, it is a viable tablet in the consumption space, especially if you're in the Amazon ecosystem because of things like you know Amazon Prime, watching the videos, things like that. Uh, it, it works for that but as a consumption device. If you try to take it to the level of a productivity device, I think that's where you trip over your own feet very quickly on it. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. the performance, even at this top end thing, the performance is still not up to snuff if the app you need is even available through the Firestore, which is which is a recurring problem. Well, so, well you can... You can... The, you can, and it's not difficult at all, install You can the actual Google Store into the Kindles because I have done it in my wife. It it does require some, some technical skill to do so. It's not something that I would say 
you know, your, your elderly parent is going to sit down, uh, you know, and likely do on their own. It does require a little bit of technical wherewithal to be able to do that, but you're correct. Once you do that, you can install the Google play store on it, side load it, and then be able to load those apps on there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing to keep in mind too, is that even on their top end, for example, the fire max 11 tops out at 128 gig. So the storage on that tablet maxes out pretty quick. And again, it, these are devices that are really, you know, books is another good example. The Remarkable. Now, the Remarkable is a slightly different conversation because the Remarkable is targeted as a productivity tool. It's an e-ink productivity tool. It's also an expensive productivity tool. It's not something that you're going to, you know, it, if you're looking at comparable price points, and I'm going to look it up right now, I think you find many items in that same price range. I mean, I'm, what I'm seeing right now is about $549 on average for, for the Remarkable, the Remarkable 2. Uh, yeah, about $500. So in that $500 price range, you're now looking at comparable, well, could I get an iPad? Could I get right. a full a full-fledged tablet? Or the thing that we haven't even talked about, could I get a Chrome OS tablet? Could I get a Windows tablet, get a Surface, you know, get it, get maybe a slightly older Surface that'll work just fine. Those are viable options at that price point. But I think that's the biggest delimiter in this is when are you willing to cross into the same pricing area that the Android and iOS, you know, trademark next to those names um, play in? If you're not willing to cross into that price space, the lower end devices, you're really going to get what you pay for, I think, in most cases. Well, and and it comes to now to the second part, you know, what are you looking to do with this device? And why I right. asked that question, okay, um, in my case, what ha one of the things that happens, could the device read? Yes, but the e ink color e ink, that it was the reason I bought it, wasn't clear enough for me to read comics. You know that I read a lot of them, but I, okay, so that mm -hmm. didn't bring any advancement really, or at least not over the iPad, okay? And the second thing was that I discovered, okay, I wanted to do this, yeah, but this device is too slow to do that, okay? So, or, so what are you going to do with that device? Mm -hmm. It's very important. For reading, that book was fine, completely fine. To mark PDF, completely fine, okay? For going into doing more, exactly what you said, it was too slow, didn't work. So that's where you need to be very clear, what is that device going to do for you? If you want to do multiple things, that is very important. And actually what I learned from that experience was I transform my iPad mini. One of the things that I wanted to, to have was a device that I could disconnect with, okay? Uh, that I may have access to certain things, but I could disconnect with, okay? My phone is not going to be disconnected. My iPad Pro, that is what I use for work, is not going to be disconnected. So I want a device to accomplish that. And what I decided after that experience was not to get another cheap tablet, but to mm -hmm. get my iPad mini and take the time to disable all the notifications. So yeah. I now have a device where I can come, have all the power, all the ecosystem access to anything that I may care to access, but without any distraction. And that was a game changer for me. Okay, why I didn't thought about that before? Don't ask me, I don't know. Okay, but that was a game changer. Not It was not because I didn't have the devices, it was because it never occurred to me. But that was one of what, when I, after I bought the device and the device failed, I went into more deep into, okay, why this fail? Well, because I wanted to do all these things if I wanted to, but this device did not have the power to do. So I begin looking into, okay, but what is what you want to accomplish from the device? And that's when I look, okay, what I want is a device that I can grab, sit on the couch and be disconnected. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what I was able to accomplish there. Yeah, with the, um, 
With things like the low-end Amazon tablets, there is definitely a target market for those. I mean, if you look at like the next step down, the Fire 10 uh, is is a sub one hundred dollar device. So if you're if you're getting something, say for a kid, for them to be able to watch videos on and play games and do that sort of thing, that's a no fear type of investment. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. if if they crack it, fine, they crack it. I get it. You know that happens. Even Amazon send you the sell you the kids a, a version that costs a little bit more, but it's the kids mm -hmm. whatever, and it's guaranteed the kids can destroy them and they will replace them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get the ones where they literally come shipped with the bulletproof bouncy cases that they can live in. You know, all all of that stuff, it makes sense for the market. I think where people struggle is when they try to misapply those devices where they say, hey, I'm going to buy a Fire tablet and I want to be able to use Microsoft Word on it. No, you're it's possible but it's a really bad idea. And that's, mm -hmm. it's where you have to kind of think about that implementation and that framework to be able to say, okay, what am I going to get out of this? And this is one of the things that I find interesting about some of these secondary devices that we're seeing hitting the market over the past couple of years, things like the books, things like the remarkable things like Chrome OS tablets. Um, these are devices that that br that muddy the water in a good way i think mm -hmm. things like the remarkable provide an alternative method of functionality without having to lock into buying an ipad or buying a high-end samsung tablet i want to be able to write on this i want to be able to get to my calendar i want to be able to check my email i want the battery to last a long time and this is something that we've talked about it's one of the instances or inclinations of getting a tablet is the assumption that the battery is going to last a long time. It's going to be easy to use. It's going to be convenient to carry. Well, that's what these devices exactly do without having to have a lot of effort going into their care and feeding. Now, when you look at something like a Chrome OS tablet, now we've got kind of a, a best of both worlds situation in many cases where you're able to say, Hey, I can actually use this like I use a Chromebook. I can do a lot of the stuff that I would do there. And I have that functionality, but <laughs> it's still a Chromebook. So I still hit limitations on certain things that I can do and certain things that I can't do. When you look at things like a Surface, you've got that multi-tiered environment where you've got the high-end surfaces, which are more expensive than anything else out there. Uh, they're fairly fragile devices. I've I've seen more surfaces killed just through daily operation than anything else, but mm -hmm. they are powerful window, Windows machines. Correct. So I think we're starting to see a lot of variety on that perimeter of options for people. But I think, again, when we talk about productivity, specifically personal productivity, many of those options hit their ceiling very quickly. Um, and, and I'll go back so, to the remarkable, uh, just as, as the quickest example. I have heard more people talk about how great the remarkable is until they want they realize that there's no color ever as an option. Then all of a sudden they'll start. But I want to watch Netflix on this, too. No, you got to have a separate device for that. That's where you start to run into problems. And, you know, and there is a couple of things I want to say with that. One is. What I have heard consistently on those devices is they work when you think on one thing, only one thing you're going to do there, and that's the only thing you use. I have a, the person I know who have a books Palma. Okay, the books Palma is very the tablet's phone size. Okay, and he what he wanted was a device that he can take to the hot tub to read. He did not care for email. He did not care for any of that. He wanted basically a Kindle waterproof. He got it in a small size. He got it. He loved it. Okay. And he preferred that because if he wants to go and do the occasional surfing because he's there, he don't care that it's a slow. He's expecting zero out of this device. On those specific cases, it works. The problem goes, again, what you said. When you want that device who do one thing to do what the standard is. When you want color, you want Netflix, you want, because they can't. They're not designed for that. They are designed to do one thing. They may do it very well, but one thing. 
the books, one thing, they are not designed to be really. Right now, those cheaper tablets are more used for note-taking and handwriting than anything else. They are not really designed to take over your tablet. Also, take in consideration that Google, Samsung, as well as Apple, has come very affordable in price. Okay, three forty nine, I think, is the cost of the new iPad. It's going to be small, yeah. But the one you are buying for one hundred and fifty is a small too. Don't be full on that, okay? And and it will get you into the ecosystem in the iPad in particular, because I have heard people. Yeah, I love the idea that this device is a ink in the iPad specifically. You can. Okay, use the use of the accessibility and the colors and basically remove colors. Okay, and I do it a lot. Okay, I, I even have a program. So if I hit the power button three times, it turned my screen gray okay, in gray colors. So basically remove every color. And it's great for reading at night. It is great for when I'm going to bed. It has a lot of benefits. So, but you are not going to get that into that early tablet. You're on mute. Isn't part of the idea for the e-ink not so much just the fact that it's black and white, but that it's also a much significant or a much increased battery saving? I don't know how much it actually does, but I I know that I is know part either. of the idea. Yeah, I, actually, we'd have to probably talk to Ray because I think he has a remarkable. Um, he, here's the thing that that I keep thinking about. And I'm sitting here holding <laughs> within arm's reach. I have a Fire tablet. I have a Chrome OS tablet and I have an Android tablet. In all three of them, if I turn them off and lay them side by side, you would be hard pressed to tell one from the other. Physically, there's virtually no difference in the devices. They all have a camera. They all have a black bezel around the outside. Two of the three have keyboards. It's all it's all basically the same thing. So the question really becomes the software. It's the operating system that makes the difference. Now, two of the three are running Android. One's running Chrome OS. And I shared with our productivity cast group earlier in the week that Google is now looking at running Chrome OS on Android, being able to provide that functionality, which I think that could be a substantial step in the right direction. Um, you know, I've, I've always said that if they got their Android support working better on Chrome OS, that would be really nice. But if they flip that, that could be even better. But here again, I go back to the basic question of these three devices, the devices themselves will not dictate who should use which one. It's completely up to the OS that's on them. And if you're in the Apple ecosystem, well, the, the operating system is very easy. I mean, it is what it is. So that actually becomes defining by the hardware, not the software, which I think is an interesting difference between well, the two sides. And it go back to something we have said in this show multiple times. What is your ecosystem? Because if you if your main phone is an iPhone and you live on the iOS ecosystem, you have a Mac, okay, then get an iPad. Okay. If it's an Android, get an Android tablet. Your tablet should follow the language of your phone. I believe into that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's familiar. Don't go for a book if you have an iPhone, unless you're very techy, because it's going to be just frustrating you know and, and again i experienced it with my wife who is not techie okay she wanted she got the the, the fire tablet because that's the device she wanted okay mm -hmm. but it's been very frustrating because she wanted to work like her phone like the tablet she had before like the ipad she had before and it's not it is not going to be ever so what has done the device instead of being a source of enjoyment Okay, a lot of times a sense of frustration. Okay, not yes. only that, there is a lot of uh, a devices around our house, and the tablet, being being a Kindle Fire, is designed to have that 
a assistant there. So every mm-hmm. time somebody called the assistant, the tablet wake up like, hey, I am here. And she gets very mad. The, so, um, you know, it, it's interesting that you bring that up. The overlap in the ecosystem. So, for example, how you've got Apple devices not only tablets, but also, you know, their, their home based is it home kit or whatever they could, I forget what it is on that side. It's home kit. Um, I get. So they're all designed to interface on the back end. Right now they are, but they, okay. they used not to. That's the same thing on the, eco, on the echo side, on the Amazon side. Mm-hmm. And what I think is interesting is I can't think of a person, not even me, who's controlling their Amazon ecosystem using a fire tablet. I have it. I have the capabilities to do it, but I don't because it doesn't, it just doesn't work as smoothly. I don't think. So I'm curious Mm -hmm. on the Apple side, if, if it does work more smooth, smoothly, or if that's still almost like an air gap between the systems, because I know, for example, on the Amazon side, um, theoretically, I could talk to my Echoes, therefore control my TV through my Echoes. I can, through certain Echo devices, patch the sound from my TV to those devices. Well, that's a little different in structure. But in none of this is that saying that I'm going to sit here and use my Fire tablet as the center of my entire system. It just, I mean, they've thrown that out there a couple of times, but it's not something that I know that anybody does. And I, I'm curious if why that is. Well, and I think that talks about managing that expectation they know well enough Mm -hmm. that that device is not powerful enough to to manage that you know we in our house it's amazon what has the you know the echoes and and is what manage all the things not the apples and the reason is at some point the apple cost was significantly higher than control amazon and the availability was also lower mm-hmm. so we set up the smart home with amazon and states and at this point replace it it will be ridiculous i can access even on my ios to anything amazon so it doesn't make any sense but the main device to manage as you said is not going to be one other top it's too slow yeah and, may- and maybe that's the now it's it Thinking about that speed issue and taking somebody like an Amazon, I know that's where they place this Fire Max 11 is to trying to be a productivity tool, uh, trying to, because I, if I remember correctly, they even offered it or offer it with a keyboard. Yeah. It has an optional keyboard and stylus. So they, they want it to play in that same space as the iPads and the Androids uh, and the Samsungs of the world. I just don't know of anybody who's actually gotten this thing in it and is doing anything real with it on a daily basis. Um, I think this is falls into a swing and a miss for them. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting challenge at that lower end um, because of how much, how quickly you start to say, okay, what more can it do? Mm-hmm. That's almost, that's almost an instinct is to see how much further you can press this and you realize now you're sealing out pretty quick. Well, and I think that's part of the problem, you know, it remind me uh, when many years back, you know, when you got on certain cars and has that button that says overdrive. Okay. And it was really for entertainment. It really do anything. And it's what happened a little bit with the tablets again. If you want them from that one thing, if you want the remarkable because you don't want to get any of the distractions, any of that, but you don't want the power, you just want to take the notes, that device is the device. But as soon as you want to add or build on top of that, the device will choke because it's not designed. It's optimized for those kind of, and and that's something that 
the Amazon Fire tablets, they're remarkable. Even the books, okay? They don't tell you, oh, you can do videos with this. No, no, they go and tell you very, very specific things that you should be able to attempt with mm -hmm. with their devices. Okay, they are not trying to tell you, oh, you are going to be able to do everything. No, no, they're, and that is good. Okay, that is good. You know, if you open, okay, there, okay. It is basically, you know, what you can do with a ultra tablet. Hey, experience e-paper. Okay, they're not telling you go and watch video. It's e-paper. Okay, the Palma. Hey, this is mobile e-paper. Okay, and what they're telling you is yes, you can do a little bit more into these devices, but they are not designed to compare with your phone, to compete with your iPad, to compete, they are not going to be replacements. What you are going to find on the Samsung or the iPads or even the Google devices is for some users, they can replace. And, and yesterday, a friend of mine called me because she's been using a Mac in her professional life for many years. And... The company mm -hmm. she worked with told her that she cannot use the Mac anymore. And, and well, she was concerned, okay, for lack of a different word. And her question was, can I, you know, I, I have done this, 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 this with the iPad. And basically her decision was, okay, can I use an iPad? Yes. And she said, I grabbed your book, uh, the iPad only book, and I started reading the book. She said, I know the book is very old, but it, the, the principles and the stuff were still yes. very relevant. And it helped me to move, basically transition from the Mac to the iPad because I do not want to work in a PC. And, and this is something that sometimes is difficult for people to understand why you don't want to work in a PC, you know, and it has nothing to do. How much do... time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it is, I tell that because when people ask me, I don't understand, you are iPad only. Okay, your main device on iPad, why? Well, because I have been able to move my workflow to feed that iPad. In the same way, if, I, if you tell me today, no more iPad, you now need to go and only use the Vision Pro, I will need to work and refine my workflow. Same will apply to a PC or to a Mac. It's not the device. What people mm -hmm. miss is what are the workflows and how you do stuff to be able to do it on that device. And when you do it on one device and you are effective in there, that's how you do. And that is the same thing in these things, okay? It's not that the device that is under power. It is. Okay, but will but your it's supposed to be. feed this device? Okay, this device is designed to be under power. So the question is, can your workflow change to feed this under power device? Well, I, I agree. Your workflow does need to change to compensate. If you've decided that the cost value you're going to get from this underpowered device uh, is worth it then yes, making those adjustments are, are definitely worth the consideration. Here's the thing that I find most interesting about that, though, is that this is no different than when we talk about people having to or needing to simplify their routines and their workflows. Often, and this is kind of a tangent, but often we see, I know I see it, and I'm sure you've seen it, people's workflows and, and routines that have become bloated because the tools they have are powerful enough. They're providing all kinds of extra functions that really at the end of the day aren't necessary. So for example, I got into a conversation one day, uh, I was talking with somebody about using Excel. Can, well, can I run Excel locally on this? And I'm like, uh, not really, no, but you can run the 365 version of Excel. Well, can it do everything? Well, no, but do you do everything? And that's where the conversation got interesting. It's like, well, what are the things you're doing? That's what you need to see if it can do. 
not mm -hmm. does it have feature parity between the desktop and the cloud. If there are specific things on the desktop that you use, that you are committed to, that are part of your workflow, part of your routine, that cannot be changed and or removed, then yes, those can be deal breakers. But I find many, many times people will latch on to features and functions that honestly are not deal breakers. But they've decided that unless this is exactly the other thing, they must have the biggest, fanciest thing. And I'm I'm curious to see generationally, this is me getting on, on a little bit of a tangent here. I'm curious to see if generationally this starts to change because most of the people of our generation, older, old, older, um, grew up using desktop applications, download, right. install, run on the local machine, they could be big and beefy and bloated and have every function under the sun and every software update was like a year in advance, you know, took a year to get. The generations after us have been raised more and more in a browser centric environment mm -hmm. than they have in a desktop one. And I'm wondering if we're going to see now generationally that they're like, no, I, I don't want to load something on my local machine. I want it to all run there. I want all the functionality there. I don't want to have to install something here. I wonder if we're going to start to see that mindset change <laughs> for good and bad. I mean, there are things that are extremely difficult to do coming from the cloud even today. Right. But I think we may start to see that shift. And if that's the shift, that's a shift that lends itself to being compatible with these lower end devices, these ones that are more browser centric, connect, connection centric, that do not require the big iron on the local side. So you can have a lower end machine if it's getting everything from cloud-based systems and servers. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to to see how that part of the conversation evolves over time. Um, I look at companies like Apple. I don't know that Apple necessarily wants everybody to operate from the cloud. They're an app-based solution. Uh, they're, they're a localized-based solution, kind of like Android. Android is all about its Android ecosystem. Uh, it's not no, really not encouraging said. you to focus in the cloud. But that said, on Android, as well as on iOS, you can get okay um, the browser and download them as an application okay in the in both devices. So that also gives you that power of the cloud with the illusion that you have an iPad in in your desktop. You know the the, the progressive applications. Yeah, but let's let's be honest about something though. On neither platform is there a good browser. No. I mean, between Safari, that. between Android Chrome, between Android Edge, I don't know why, but nobody seems to be able to make a decent browser on either of these platforms. Well, because if they make a decent browser, it's the dead of the platform. Because now you will be able to do everything on, on a smaller device than a PC. My, my kids, okay, live on their iPhone. I have more and more clients coming to me to get ditch of their laptop. And what is interesting is they are not wanted to get ditch the laptop to go to a tablet. They want to ditch the laptop to go to phones. The phone yes. has turned in, and I'm not talking about young clients, I'm talking about mm -hmm. more advanced in the professional, okay? And yeah. I've been now coaching clients into getting a second phone, okay? And work with two phones side by side. Okay, and how to connect their phones mm -hmm. to a larger screen and those kind of things because that is more effective. And and I had a, a client who just got um a glasses, okay, they're called the B Tour glasses, D I T U R E. Okay, and, and I was saying it's very cool that I get paid to play with technology. Okay, but basically they are a glasses, okay, that give you a screen and you can connect it to his phone. His issue was privacy, okay? 
now he can connect it. He get a, I think it's 120 pixel screen. It's a reasonable screen. I know that he carries a foldable keyboard, you know, and I laugh when we were implementing this solution with him. So I was sharing, you know, how in college, many months back, my device, what I could afford to go to college was not a laptop, was a Palm Pilot. Mm-hmm. So I had a Palm Pilot with the keyboard and that's how I take, all my notes were taken on flat text because that's what I could afford. I could not afford the laptop. So I had that. And then I went to the to the computer lab if I needed to format it to print, um, you know, for for work. But other than that, everything lives in the in the Palm Pilot. And what I was laughing is, oh, we're back to the days of the Palm Pilot. And I was always say technology is circular. Okay, we start in the technology and go circles. Okay, it just when it comes back to that initial point, the technology is second time around, way cooler. But it is that basically he has a phone, those glasses that are not very big. Okay, mm-hmm. and I can show them in the screen in a second. Okay, and a foldable keyboard. Okay, and that's all that he is carrying now. Okay, so he can basically go sit and work anywhere that he gets so you know this is the size yeah. of the glasses okay so sorry. they look like an oversized pair of wayfarers they, they they exactly they do that's exactly what they look but they had two screens okay a usb cable that he can connect on the bottom of his iphone okay and mm-hmm. now he get a massive screen with the keyboard so it it meets every requirement that he was that he needed and we've We've talked about this in the past, how, again, and this is also a, I want to say it, it's a generational thing too. The phones that we have in our pockets are so much more powerful. They're more powerful than the tablets that you can get in mo- in many cases. Um, now that the operating systems are starting to provide more external connectivity, it's very easy for you to say, or I say it's very easy. It's not difficult to go through and set up a configuration where you just plug in your phone to an external monitor with an external keyboard and mouse. And you're able to use it, especially on Android. Now Google's talking about making part of Android that desktop type of functionality. Samsung has had decks for the longest time to be able to do that. Neither of them are perfect by any stretch. Nope. My industry. Why we why we don't have Google or why we don't have Chrome OS phones still kind of dumbfounds me. But I think we're getting to that point where that device that we have in our pocket, it makes sense to make that the CPU of our entire system. And the reason why I say that is, is because continuity. You're getting your messages, you're getting your, you know, you're sending your texts and things like that. It would make perfect sense for a company who's, I hate, I hate that they do this, but like the hoteling model of when you don't actually have a dedicated desk, you just go in and you use whatever space is available. Well, if I don't have to issue you a laptop, I can issue you a workspace that has a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. And all you have to do is plug your company issued phone into it and all of a sudden that's your device and that's controlled that's a big step in the right direction if you can get to the point of being able to do the bulk of the functionality that you need to be able to do because then you can do things like easily remotely wipe a phone or lock it if need be you know from a security standpoint use it for two-factor authentication all of those pieces that come into play i think we're getting closer to that we're getting much, much closer on the personal side. Yeah, I think it's also getting closer. It would it will be nice to see this get to the point where somebody will say, why would I buy a laptop? Why would I even buy a tablet? There have been devices, Acer, I want to say Acer, was it Acer? Years ago, had a docking station where you would plug your phone into and basically make it a big tablet. Um the power's there. I mean, you just need yep. a bigger screen. That's all, a bigger touch screen. But that's, yep. these are all non-tablet personal productivity tools, non-iOS and Android um, traditionally defined personal productivity tools 
that I think give us options, but I also think cloud the water. And I can't state enough how this goes back to the level of importance of understanding what you need to do. The simple understanding of what you need to do, not what you could do, not what you can do, not what is incredibly possible to do, but what do you actually need to accomplish? If you have that understanding, that immediately sets you on the right path as to what technology should be involved and what technology should not be involved. That said, still bring all, bring all the cool gadgets. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So any other thoughts around this? Nope. I think I think that cover I I will go again into before getting these devices, what is the use? But the second question is is this use that you're thinking today may change? And if you yes. think it may change, then go to the future use, not to the current use. You know, and, and and I'm coming back to the remarkable. I had a client who wanted the remarkable, okay? And he wanted to take the notes. And this client ended up getting a Samsung, I think it was an S8, okay? The, the little tablet. And, and the reason of that was not because what he was envisioning right there. Right there, what he wanted was transition his paper notebook into digital note taking and mm -hmm. everything else and for that the remarkable will have been perfect but when he looked into and we discussed about further use he noticed that the, the remarkable was not may not be the perfect fit for other things so he went to the samsung and he was very happy and again why mm -hmm. why i recommend the samsung to him his phone it's an Android, not a not an iPhone. Okay, that is fine. Right. So I recommend Match, and it was a, a very good. And he traveled with this thing and worked with this thing, and he really liked it. But that's the thing you need to think, not what you the problem you're solving today. What problem mm -hmm. may come tomorrow with this device? Okay, now that I Future have proofing all is my, a big thing. Yeah, now that I have all my PDFs in this device. What else do I'm going to want to do with it? Well, and that's thinking about the future proofing of the devices. It really falls again back into this price threshold, because if we if we consider it three tiers, we consider the lowest tier, anything like sub one hundred dollars, uh, mid tier up to about four hundred dollars mm -hmm. and then high end from four hundred up. If you're getting something in that sub one hundred dollar tier. Your future proofing is that it's cheap to replace. Right. You know it's not. You know it's not going to get updates. You know it's not going to be anywhere near powerful enough to really consider a long lifespan. It's that when you outgrow it, you get rid of it and you move on. At the high end, upper end of the scale, you expect those to have a long lifespan. You expect them to get updates. You expect them to be powerful enough to go for multiple years because you're paying for that time period. It's the mid-range ones that are the problem because the mid-range ones, you wind up with the expectation of a longer lifespan because their price point is closer to the high end. Right. But you're paying less than the high end, so you're going to get a lot of the results of the low end. So you have people who go and they'll buy a, an, a tablet off of Amazon, like an and a mid range tablet from some vendor off of Amazon. And then realize that, you know, two years into it, well, this thing's slow. It hasn't gotten a security update. So you've spent $300 and now you're not really getting the, the price of admission for that. Mid ranges can be really tough. We've mentioned the the Samsung S8 tablet a bunch of times. It's one of the the most to me. It's like the Nexus Seven of today. Um, it is the best all around overall Android tablet available. 
when you compare not only capability, but price at current current date. There's nines, the tens are going to be coming. That's fine. It's a great target one. However, it is still even that, even as old as it is, it is still two and a half times more expensive than the mid-range ones that you will find. And that's where you have to be careful. If tablets are one of those things where it rarely benefits you to go cheap on them unless you have a very specific purpose. Now, that said, if you want to get the longest life possible, absolute longest lifespan, I'd say a Chrome OS tablet. And, the, and that has nothing to do with the hardware. It has everything to do with the fact that Chrome OS gets the update. I, I agree on that. And if you, and I will say, and I said this to people often when they ask me for a recommendation on iPad, I tell people, well, ask which kind of user are you? Are you the user when the next iPad come in a year need to upgrade? Okay. Mm -hmm. And most of the people I talk to, you know, who are asking that question, they're not. No, no. I want to buy this thing and keep it as long as I can. And if you are as long as I can, then always consider the pro version of the iPads. And the reason is I, Apple treat them differently. The lifespan of a traditional iPad is between five and seven years. The pros are designed to last 10. Same as a Chrome, same as a Chromebook that you were describing and the updates mm -hmm. will come and they will be relevant into that. You know, I, it was just last year when iOS 17 was released, that the first iPad Pros the, the, the was considered now not worth to upgrade, okay? That said, that was 10 years, okay? So it's a lot mm -hmm. of time for a device. So yes, they are more expensive, no question about it, but remember, you are not replacing this machine that often. I used to fight with my father, years ago okay now i pay for the machine so i buy what i want but when I, he used to buy his machines he went to go to this any electronic store and buy the cheapest pc available and say do not buy that in 12 months you are buying replacing this because it's a piece of junk and he never listened because parents don't listen to their kids okay <laughs> apparently and i'm coming by the way to be you know, in that position where mm -hmm. my kids are starting to grow up and I'm starting to go deaf to what they advised. But <laughs> um, but look into that, look into not the price, but the, what is the equation between the price that you can afford and the time that machine is going to last. Yeah, that's that's really the hang up. And it goes back to the old days of, of dedicated desktop PCs that had that weren't game built machines, machines that you would ex assume that you're going to be swapping out the parts to extend its lifespan because machines would last five, seven years. Right. Um, it's a, it's a different world and different conversation for those now. But I think that's one of the things that we keep restating this in, in multiple ways, but coming back to the same point, you have to decide how long you are comfortable having a device. And there's a weird bit of math that I like to attach to things. Figure out what that device is going to cost you on a monthly basis. So the rule of thumb I give somebody is, are you going to get $20 of value per month out of that device? And here's how I come up with that math. Okay. If you figure that out over the course of a year, $20 a month is $240 a year. Double that, that's 480. So now you're looking at roughly 500. So if you get a tablet that you can get a solid two years of productive use out of, you can justify spending $500 for the tablet, roughly. If you're going to go three years, well, you're going to have to add another 240 onto that. So you've raised the price point because you're basically depreciating it over, over that time, but right. you're also getting that level of value out of it. So with that math in mind, 
If you look at the other end of the scale, if you buy a hundred dollar tablet, you can reasonably expect what five months of good of payoff time. So if that thing lasts two, three years of just consuming, you know, videos and things like that, it's a great value at that price for what you're asking it to do. But if you combine that with what you're asking it to be capable of, well, then you can really get into a, an issue. But that's what that's why I always give people that measure. If you're looking at a really, really top high-end premium tablet, $1,300 tablet, then yeah, you better be expecting a good life frame or lifespan out of that. I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect three years out of that device, including software updates and everything else. Shouldn't, shouldn't be unrealistic. So my, my basic measure is anywhere from 20 to $30 per month is what you should expect to be, for lack of a better term, your virtual payment on that device. And if you're willing to do that, then the odds are very good. You're going to be able to get into the scale of a device that you're going to be comfortable with. Right. So. All right. Well, I think we've kind of explored this one as much as we can. So. At least for now. Yeah. For now. I think next time we'll we'll delve into something else. Actually, next time maybe we ought to start talking about these echo devices and and other things that we have sitting around and how we can put them to use because that's my current project. Oh, I like seeing how seeing how far I can push them. At least the the ones I have. So, yep, perfect. Well, with this, then we have come to the end of our show. As always, follow us where you like to listen to podcasts like us, or subscribe to us and leave us a review. You can also interact with us on personalproductivity.club. There is a, a channel there for Trust Platform. We are Goose Tipping Out and our Gateways. See you next time from your favorite device. Thank you. <laughs>